mention the sponsor again real quick, uh, Technical Analysis of Stocks and Commodities, awesome magazine. Uh, you get a free copy. If you sign up for any of the coaches today or any Metastock product or anything along those lines, we're going to give you a complimentary five-month or uh, two-year subscription, and that's compliments of Technical Analysis. I, don't, I said we're going to, but it's actually Stocks and Commodities that's going to do that. They did a great job of helping us promote the event. Uh, it's a great magazine, almost the industry standard, uh, or I would say the industry standard. Uh, <laughs> not almost. There's no almost about it. Uh, I just er uh, got up early today. Um, special thanks to all of our presenters today for all of their support as well. Um, um, if you do want to take a trial of Metastock, I'd recommend it, of course. Uh, it's one best software in its price category for 24 years in a row. And uh, let's, you can do that at metastock.com slash Trader Summit T. Let's talk a little bit about Steve uh, Bigelow. Steve is a great uh, technician, uh, very entertaining speaker as well, uh, has a large following, does, had a, the chance. This is a, a product that we um, kind of worked very closely with Steve um, and we released it in October. It's been uh, going very well uh, with his add-on. And um, he teaches, uh, he runs a, a, a trading room uh, and um, I, you know, one of the best, uh, very, very entertaining presenter, uh, very knowledgeable at candlesticks, and um, uh, I would say uh, one of the most prominent experts about that. So I'm going to go ahead and bring him in here, turn the time over to him, and let him talk. So, uh, Steve, let me go ahead and unmute your microphone. <laughs> here you go. You should be able to talk now. All right. Good. Good after. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Steve. Uh, uh, all right. So let's see. I'm going to try to show the screen. Let me. I'm going to stay with you till we see it. All right. Let me take it up here. Let me do slideshow from beginning. Show screen. I hope we got the right one. That's it. All right. All right. Well, well, I do see uh, the finding the right strategy for you. Okay. Is that right. the one that's, you mean to show? That's yeah, that's the one we're going to get started, I guess. Uh, All right. Cool. I'm going to shut up and let you talk. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Well, thank you for having me on this morning. Uh, I've been doing candlesticks for well over, I guess, 25, 30 years now. Um, let's see. Oh, I guess this is a disclaimer that we've got some plugins, but what I'm going to try to do is go through some of what the our 12 major signals are. When I first started learning candlestick analysis, um, there wasn't anybody out there to learn it with. Uh, I had somebody gave me some antiquated uh, information on candlesticks, and it took me three months of them badgering me for my finally to pick it up. I figured anything is sophisticated to sounding as candlesticks wasn't worth the time and effort. But as I started looking at it, it said, I kept thinking, man, this makes sense. And the more I looked at it, the more sense it made. So unfortunately, I didn't have anybody out there to uh, kind of learn it with. Uh, so I learned everything I could about it. It's nice uh, when you're learning the process to have some people around so you can kind of get a second opinion to make sure you're in the right direction. My problem was back then I didn't have anybody to get a second opinion. The only time I could get a second opinion is when I would go to the doctor and say, what's wrong with me? And he'd say, you're fat. And I say, well, I think I want a second opinion. And he goes, all right, you're ugly too. So when I first started learning candlesticks, it was learning every single one of them. What I discovered, there was 12 major signals out of the 50 or 60 that uh, you really needed to learn. And those signals will provide not only very high probability reversals, but the Japanese rice traders over the past 400 years not only showed us or recognized the signal pattern, but they also described what this investor sentiment was that created that pattern. So once you, uh, uh, once you learn the signals and understand why those signals were created, you pretty well have a concept of uh, what the price trends are going to do on the basis of a, a seasoned trader. Um, so what I'm going to do here real quick is go through some of the major signals. And basically, what are we looking for in any type of trading uh, program? We're looking for things that are going to create uh, high profits. And I see a lot of promoters say, yeah, we made big money here and made big money here. I tell people I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in what happened here 
and what happened here that told me this move was about ready to occur. So one of the things that we uh, add to our signal analysis is the T-line. The T-line is the eight exponential moving average. Um, and the first thing I tell people when I do one of these presentations is don't bother to take notes. I guess this will all be available to everybody. We're going to go too fast and uh, furious here to be able to uh, take notes. Just kind of let your eyes kind of follow what we're going through. But the T-line is very simple. Very simple rule of a T-line. If you see a candlestick buy signal or close above the T-line, you can stay long as long as that signal or that pattern doesn't create a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. On the other hand, if you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line, you can stay short until you see a candlestick buy signal and a close back up above the T-line. The T-line, yes, uh, is somewhat like a Fibonacci number. People don't, I mean, not very many people have the T-line or the eight exponential moving average on their charts like they do the 50 and the 200. The reason we have the 200, the 50, and the 20 on our charts is that's because what every, or that's what every major money manager around the world uses. And the benefit with candlestick analysis is it shows you exactly what's going on in investor sentiment at important technical levels. Yeah, the T-line is the eight exponential moving average. So the, uh, going through the signals real quick, the doji is the most well-known of all the candlestick signals, and that's where it opens and closes at the same level during a time frame. Now, I'm going to use the daily time frame for the this illustration, uh, but the signals are the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. That time frame, if you're trading the E-minis, can be on the one-minute, three-minute, ten-minute chart combination, or if you're a long-term investor, it could be the daily, weekly, monthly uh, combination. But a doji is where they open and close it at the same level during the day. A long-legged doji is if your price move is huge during the day and they still close at about the same level. A dragonfly doji opens at the top, trades lower, comes back up, and uh, trades right at the top. Looks like a dragonfly. And the Japanese rice traders call this a gravestone doji. It's, they describe it as the warriors coming out of camp, going into battle. By the end of the day, they're beaten back into camp, leaving their dead all over the field, which creates the gravestone doji. A derivative of the doji is a spinning top, where it has a small body, but all of them represent the same thing. There's indecision going on between the bulls and the bears. So anytime you see a doji at the top, it's time to take profits. That's usually where you've finally found an equilibrium between the bulls and the bears. Now, my top is I use stochastics with settings of 1233. So basically, it boils down to if you see a candlestick reversal signal in an overbought condition, it's time with high probabilities, it's time to take profits. Now, a lot of people uh, tell you to stay away from gaps. You don't understand what's going on with gaps. With candlestick signals, gaps and signals are your best friend. Where do most people buy? they buy exuberantly at the top. Where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. And that was usually me, and I was even a stockbroker for eight years, and I was the one always recommending stocks when everything was enthusiastic and I could never figure out how come every time I was buying a stock when everything looked great, it immediately turned around. Or every time I finally got out of a position because I couldn't stand the pain anymore, it would turn, turn right back up again. And so the answer was, when I would buy up here, I'm thinking, all right, who the heck is selling? If I'm buying up here, it's usually the smart money. Or if they are way down in the oversold condition and everybody's bailing out, the rhetorical question was, who the heck is buying this garbage down here? And again, it's usually the smart money buying at the bottom. Um, so if you see that gap up in an overbought condition, and see a doji, if they open it lower the next day, take profits. The further away you move from the T-line and you start seeing sell signals, uh, we just went through the rule that if you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, you can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line with one caveat. The further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability they're gonna come back and test it. So if you see a candlestick reversal signal, doji, and opens lower the next day, the probabilities are pretty strong. They're going to come back down and test it, take your profits, 
You can always buy on a J click pattern, which is one of the patterns that we've set up for Metastock or for the scanning techniques. Um, uh, you can always buy back, but why take the risk? If this is a high probability time to sell, you can always buy back when you see a buy signal. So anytime I see that gap up in the overbought condition, I'm ready to start taking profits. Remember, the long-legged doji means there's dramatic indecision going on. If they open it lower the next day, you close out the position. If you see a doji at the top, followed by a gap down, not only does it tell you there's indecision up here, but they've made that decision with great enthusiasm. If they are gapping it in a particular direction, that means there's usually they want to get out with some strong force. That's time to take profits. And if one doji means indecision, a series of doji means greater indecision, start looking to take profits, especially with your stochastics up in the overbought range. Again, if one doji means indecision, start looking for whether they're going to pop it up or gap it down or take it in this direction. That's the time to start taking profits. So rule number one, I mean, the Japanese rice traders came up with some very simple rules. If you see a doji at the top, take profits. If you see a doji at the bottom, you need bullish confirmation to tell you that the bulls have finally taken control. So anytime I see an oversold condition and start seeing dojis, if they start opening a positive, at least I know down here my, what my first uh, target is, the T-line. Remember, we're, our first criteria is if, if we see a uh, bullish signal and a close above the T-line, we're in an uptrend. But our first criteria is the confirmation of the signal. So if we see a bullish uh, reversal signal and it confirms the next day, at least we know the first target is up here at the T-line. At the if it comes up here and fails, we're back out of the trade, hopefully out of a bad trade with a small profit or a break even. Uh, what can you explain about a J hook? We'll get there, uh, mushroom. So again, a series of dojis means great indecision. Um, yeah, so you also use a three exponential, but that's a whole different process, uh, for fine tuning, getting in and out of trades. Uh, right now, I just want to kind of give you the general sense of what's, uh, where to find the high probability trade. So if I see a series of dojis and then I see it start moving positive, and going to close up above the T-line, that tells me this series of dojis, finally they've made their decision, is usually going to create a fairly strong price move. Anytime I see that indecision down here, and then a close above the T-line, you're probably going to be in a very strong uptrend. And there's a very simple rule of the doji, which is they're usually going to move it in the direction of how they open it after a doji. So if I start seeing buy signals, and there's a doji right on the resistance level. It's very simple. If they open it lower and I'm long, I close out the position. It's telling me the 50-day uh, moving average is acting as resistance. If they open it higher, I know I'm going to probably to the next uh, target or I can be buying on that, that basis. So remember, anytime you see that gap in a signal, that tells you that there's probably been a very strong decision to go in, the, in that direction. Um, uh, Scott, we'll get to that too. Um, just hang in there. We got a lot of information. That's why I'm saying don't take notes because we're just going to kind of fly through these. Basically, if you see a series of dojis and a bullish confirmation, you're going to be in an uptrend. Gaps allow you to anticipate what the next price move is going to be, especially when you're, you're, uh, coordinate it with candlestick signals. If I see a doji in the oversold area and they gap it up, especially if they gap it up in the, out of the oversold area, up through the T-line, I know I've got an uptrending uh, uh, move. The bigger this gap up, the higher the probability you're going to be in an uptrend. Remember, prices do not move based upon fundamentals. Prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals. And that's what moves uh, prices as investor sentiment. You can use this for any trading entity that do has fear and greed in it, whether you're trading the Forex, bonds, uh, stocks, commodities, tulip bulbs, anything that you have fear and greed. Uh, candlesticks is basically the graphic depiction of what's going on in investor sentiment. 
Uh, I don't have any uh, examples of Forex because there, I mean, there's just so many trades. But they, if you were looking at a dollar yen chart, it would look exactly the same as this chart. So again, doji at the top take profits. Doji at the bottom requires bullish confirmation. If one doji means indecision, a series of dojis means greater indecision. And here's the one that will make you tons of money. The trend will usually move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. So part of the scanning process is, is if we know what the doji represents, which is indecision, this is what we call a left-right combo, a doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal. That tells you there's been a very strong uh, reversal. Look for a very strong price move after that. It can be a, both a bearish, a bullish or bearish, a doji followed by a bearish engulfing signal. Look for a strong downtrend. Doji, bearish engulfing, gap down tells you you want to be short as fast as possible. A doji sandwich is a strong price move and then a doji. And what's our simple rule of a doji? If it opens positive the next day, it's going positive. So a very simple trading pattern is the doji sandwich, which is this day right here and this day will usually be equivalent. So if I'm seeing a doji sandwich occurring right here on the T-line and it's going positive, I know that we're going to be above the T-line and we have probably a very strong price move from that point. So again, that doji rule is if you see a uh, open positive after a doji, it's going to move in that direction. Doji sandwich tells me this day and this day will probably be equivalent. And if they're doing a doji sandwich, that pretty much tells me this fry pan bottom pattern, which we'll get to, is breaking out that we're in wave three. We have an extremely high probability of moving higher. So the bullish engulfing signal is very simple to visualize. It opens below the previous day's close and it closes above the previous day's open. So this bullish candle completely engulfs this, um, the body of this candle over here. Not necessarily the uh, shadows, just the body. And it just tells you that there's been a drastic change of investor sentiment um, and again, here's a case where they, in the oversold condition, if you can put as many parameters as you can in the analysis of a reversal, you're in the oversold condition, you see a bullish engulfing signal, which is a strong reversal signal, a close above the T-line, and the next day they start trading at positive, you're going to be in an uptrend until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. What time frame? Daily, 10 minute, on any time frame. This, this could be a one minute chart, a five minute chart, a monthly chart, it doesn't matter. It still comes back to that it's the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. The T line is the eight exponential moving average and it acts like a Fibonacci number. Nobody uses it, so it's kind of a natural number and it works very effectively. If you see a candlestick buy signal or close above the T-line, stochastics in the oversold area, the probabilities are you want to stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. Very simple as far as entry and exit strategies. If you see a bullish signal, what do you want to see the next day? You want to see the bulls are still there confirming uh, that the signal is being confirmed. What you don't want to see is an opening back down here. That doesn't tell you that the uh, bulls are there. You're looking for, even if it opens right here, you kind of hold off. And if it comes back up through the previous day's close, it'll be creating another bullish candle. That's when you could be a buyer. Essentially, candlestick signals is the graphic depiction of what's going on in investor sentiment. And it just puts you in situations where the probabilities are greatly in your favor. So a bullish engulfing signal and a close above the uh, T-line and a positive open, stochastics coming up, puts you in a high probability situation, you're gonna be in an uptrend. The bearish engulfing signal, same, same analysis. It uh, opens above the previous day's close, closes below the previous day's open, completely engulfs the body of the previous day, whether it could be a doji, there's your left-right combo, or the body of the, the previous day, you can also use this any anytime we see these type of signals, we can analyze what else is going on, such as where did this top out? Right where it topped out three weeks or four weeks before. That tells us we can start going short at this point. Um, 
What if everybody knows about the T-line? What if everybody knows about the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average? Right now, there's so few people. I mean, um, I mean, you don't have to worry about, I mean, people don't use it. Uh, it's just a natural Fibonacci type number. Uh, why the eight day? Because it seems to work. There's nothing magical about this. Um, don't take my word for it. Put it on your uh, charts and test it for yourself. You'll see that I, I used to make very good money using the candlestick signals and the uh, patterns. But when I started applying uh, the T-line on it, which was one of my students showing uh, uh, how effective it worked, I started using it four, five, six years ago. My profitability just grew dramatically. Bearish engulfing, time to go short. Hammer signal. Hammer signal, there's only one rule that you have to know in candlestick analysis, and that's the number two. In this case, the tail is two times greater than the body. The body in this case could be a, a white body or a dark body, but it pretty much tells you that the bears have ha or the you know the bears have hammered out the bottom. The bulls have stepped in. What do we want to see the next day? Bullish confirmation. Um, I'm trying to read as many questions as possible. If I'm missing them, don't worry. I'll uh, I'll take questions at the end. I'll I'll try to zip through this as fast as possible. But here's a perfect setup. Expect right smack dab on the 50 day moving average, you see a hammer signal. Again, what this is is a graphic depiction of what's going on in investor sentiment. We can see immediately what the uh, reaction is when it hit the 50. That's where the big money was starting to buy. That's where we can start stepping in. These tails to the downside tell us that the bears keep trying to knock it down and the bulls keep stepping in. We wanna be buying on bullish confirmation. Or if you see a hammer signal followed by a gap up, that tells you not only was there indecision, but now they've told you exactly what the decision is going to be. This is the expected result after that. So gaps allow for the anticipation of the next strong price move. Even if they gap it down, where do the most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. We can see where do you grab from the fallen knife? Candlestick analysis provide that graphic uh, depiction of what's when a reversal is occurring. The abandoned baby is a gap down in the oversold condition and the gap right back up, a one day island reversal, tells you there's been a very strong change of investor sentiment. And, uh, the opposite of the uh, hammer is the hanging man. There's his head, there's his legs dangling down, kind of a precursor that the bears are starting to take control, but the bulls step in one more time. The next day, when the bears are back there again, the bulls say, shoot, the bears are here. Get me out of this. That will start your down downtrend. Ha or hanging man, little gap down, tell you that was the top, especially if you're up here in the overbought condition. Piercing signal. Again, the number two. Piercing signal opens at or below the previous day's trading, not just the body, but the trading, and closes more than halfway up this candle. If it opens positive, you know you're going to be in an uptrend. Another piercing signal, again, the halfway point is very important. Uh, the Japanese describe it as if the bears are in control and the bulls can close on a signal more than halfway up, the bulls are now in control. And if they gap it up the next day, you want to be an immediate buyer. The reason I say that is a lot of people say, well, I don't want to buy a stock that's up 3, 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 80 percent. You do if it comes off a candlestick signal because that tells you there's been a drastic change of investor sentiment. The dark cloud is the opposite of the piercing signal where it gaps up above any of the previous day's trading and closes more than halfway down this candle, acting like a dark cloud on that sunny uptrend. It tells you that the bears are now taking control and if you can see that that happened at a major resistant, potential resistance level like the 50 day moving average, just adds that much more credibility. That's where everybody was starting to take their profits. It also allows for uh, profit taking. Where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. If I see the word in the overbought condition and they gap it up, I've got two criteria. One, if they start taking a positive, I put my stop at the previous days or that day's open. If because it comes back down through there, it's going to do some sort of candlestick sell signal. Or if I see it gap up, I put my stop at the previous day's 
close because if it comes down through there, that tells me that is going to be a candlestick reversal signal. Shooting star. Looks like a shooting star. There's the tail. There's the body. If it opens lower the next day, you start closing out immediately. Where's the next target? Probably at least back down to the T line. So why take the risk of whether it's going to bounce and turn back up? Close out the position and then to see what it does once it gets back to the T line. That the uh, tails to the upside start telling you that the bulls try to take it up and the bears start knocking it down. If they start opening lower and trading lower, it's time to take profits. And if you see that occurring right at a major uh, resistance level, that much more uh, compelling reason to start taking profits and or going short. The inverted hammer is the reverse psychology. Um, the bears are happy, the bears are happy, the bears are happy. Then all of a sudden there's a big day where the bulls take it up and the bears are nervous, but they're relieved by the end of the day. They say, shoot, that was close. Next day they open up positive. The bears say, shoot, the bulls are still here. Get me out of the trade or let me cover my shorts. And that's what starts your uptrend. The inverted hammer, uh, the ultimate uh, inverted hammer is that uh, gravestone doji where they open it to the bottom, take it up, close it at the bottom. The nice thing about candlestick analysis is um, most uh, money managers, most uh, money people say, cut your losses and uh, let your profits run. The only problem with that in the last 35 years, 40 years I've been investing, I've never heard a single one of them tell you how you cut your losses short and let your profits run. Candlestick analysis does it very simply. If you see an inverted hammer in the oversold condition, and this is just an unofficial statistic, and they open up positive the next day, I would guess that somewhere between 95% or greater, you're gonna see an uptrend move from there. So that means on the other hand, if it opens positive, where should it not go? It shouldn't come back below this level. If it does, that inverted hammer didn't work, you close out the position immediately. Um, right, okay, the other lines, again, there's the, uh, the uh, lines on here is the 200 simple moving average, the 50 day simple moving average, and the 20 day simple moving average. Those are all on the charts because every money, major money manager around the world uses those to make decisions about their portfolio. The black line is the eight exponential moving average, which when it's used in conjunction with candlesticks, just gives you an extremely high probability. You're gonna see sell signals, but if you don't see a sell signal confirmed below the T line, you stay long until you see that sell signal confirming below the T line. Inverted hammer gap up, Oops, that was the inverted hammer with the gap up. Bullish Harami opens above the previous day's close and closes below the previous day's open. In Western terminology, it's known as an inside day. In Japanese, it means pregnant woman. There's her body and there's her belly sticking out. And it essentially tells you that the selling has stopped. And so what were we looking for the next day? Bullish confirmation. Very simple stop loss. If this was the signal that told us the selling had stopped, and the bulls should be taking control. If it closes back below the halfway point of this candle, you close out the position. And you'll usually see it at major support levels. Again, there's the bullish Harami telling us this downtrend is over. There's our doji, and what's our simple rule of a doji? If it opens positive the next day, it's gonna move positive, telling us that they've stopped the downtrend and the uptrend starting above the T-line. Bullish Harami, close above the T-line. Bullish Harami, close above the T-lines. And if you see a bullish Harami, like any other of the candlestick signals, if you see a bullish Harami and a gap up, that tells you not only has the selling stopped, well, that wasn't quite a gap up, but that they, uh, they've they made their decision of which direction to go. Oh, there it is. Bullish Harami, look at it. It's right smack dab on the 50-day moving average, and then you gap it up above the T-line, you're going to be in a strong uptrend. How far back do you consider a signal valid? Oh, only a couple of days. I think that's the uh, question. But if you start seeing signals in here and you've seen more signals in the oversold area, that pretty much tells you what's going on. The buyers are starting to step in at this level. Let's see. 
is the T-line equal to, yeah, that's what the T-line is, the trigger line, we just shortened the name. All right, the opposite of the bullish Harami is the bearish Harami. Opens below the previous day's close, closes above the previous day's open, tells you the buying has stopped. The bigger the signal, like any candlestick signal, the higher the probability uh, the uh, trend is reversed. There's your bullish Harami hanging man. I'm sorry, bearish Harami hanging man. Opens lower the next day. It's time to close out that position. Uh, the morning star signal is a three-day pattern, a big down day, a day of indecision. And then notice what happened after the doji gap up. The third day closes more than halfway up this candle. The further this gaps up and the further it closes above the halfway point, the more compelling the uptrend is going to be for starting. Morning star signal, a close above the T-line tells you now you've had a reversal, that you're in an uptrend. And if you see this, Again, right smack dab on a major support level, the more compelling that there's been a change of investor sentiment. Got a doji gap up through the T-line, uh, telling you that you're in an uptrend. The opposite of the uh, uh, morning star is the evening star. Big bullish day, a day of indecision. The third day closes more than halfway down this candle. Tells you there's, it's very symmetrical. It tells you there's been a change of investor sentiment and the bears are starting to take control. And if you, again, if you see that, evening star signal occurring right smack dab on a resistance level like the 200 day moving average. That's that's more compelling. We can see exactly what's going on in investor sentiment. Now here's the strongest of all signals. So the kicker signals where they uh, close it here or open here, close down here. Next day they gap it at or above the previous day's open and go positive. That tells you there's been a drastic change. They've kicked the investor sentiment to the upside, which usually results in a very strong price move. Anytime I see a kicker signal, I'm buying immediately. Even if I have to scrape, sell another position, because I know the result is going to be a very strong move to the upside. Now, way to get away from having to scramble around and find money or look for money to, to buy that position, this is what we call the flutter kicker signal, which is where we can see that they've gapped it up above the previous day's open and done, did a doji. What do we know about the simple rule of a doji? It's going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. So if they open up positive, we know it's going to trade positive, which means we're going to have a kicker signal, and it's called a flutter kicker signal, because if you took this little flutter out of here, you basically have a kicker signal. So it allows you to get set up for a very extremely high probability trade, whether you're a day trader or trading options, if you see a flutter kicker setup, you know the probabilities of being in a strong move the next day is extremely, uh, extreme, extremely strong. Same thing on the bearish side. If you are looking for a pattern to break out and they gap it down below the previous day's open, one thing I realize is anytime I saw that gap down, I'd say, oh man, if they would just take it up one more time and let me out, I'd be so grateful. What I discovered, if you see them gapping it down below the previous day's open, there's only one thing you should do. Close the position immediately, then you can see what you want to do from that point. So here's a fry pan bottom. These are the kind of the patterns that we look for. Fry pan bottom is a build up. Now we just went through a whole uh, process of saying we're looking for buy signals in the oversold condition. A pattern is usually going to break out when the stochastics are in the overbought condition. If I see them gapping up, coming out of a fry pan bottom, I want to be a buyer because this is the expected result uh, coming out of that this little fry pan bottom. A fry pan bottom is nothing but a slow rounding curve that you couldn't trade one way or the other. What we're looking for is the breakout over here. So a close below the T-line, higher probabilities of prices going lower. Some truisms about candlestick signals is that the, the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability is going to come back and test it. Whoops, that's it. And that also creates setups where you can see patterns where they start breaking out through resistance levels, or you see a fry pan bottom or a J hook type pattern, which we'll get to starting with a kicker signal tells you that's the exact time to start buying. Cause what we're looking for on the breakout is these strong price moves. And as long as it stays above the T line, you stay long in these positions or that series of dojis. 
I'm kind of going through some of these because, again, if you see a doji followed by a gap down, it's time to be short. If you see a doji followed by a gap up, especially in the oversold condition, it's time to be long. Let's see. Somehow we got some. I'm going to zip through here. Here's the fry pan bottom. Whoops. Let me see if I can go back to the previous one. Fry pan bottom is a slow rounding curve. Here's a little dimple. You can see some buy signals here, and then it goes flat again. That pretty much tells you that that's the halfway point from here to here. So we're buying right in here with an expectation. Either it's going to come up here and fizzle, or it's going to break out for a very strong price move. Just helps you with the timing. This is what we call the classic. Fry pan bottom, what do we expect out of a fry pan bottom? A strong price move. Then we have a J-hook pattern, which is a strong price move followed by an indecisive pullback. And we can tell the indecisiveness of a pullback by the characteristics of the signals. We know that Doji is indecision, and look, notice what it's doing. It's kind of just fading right back here to the T-line. Next time we see a buy signal, we know that this is wave three of this wave. We know this wave right here is probably going to be the same magnitude as this wave right here. So anytime we see a fry pan bottom breakout, do we always get huge moves like this? Not necessarily, but the nice thing about candlestick analysis is it puts you in situations where you can be participating with high probabilities of being in these big price moves. There's a bullish engulfing left-right combo right at the breakout level, telling us we're probably going further. Uh, let's see, I thought I had this one we've been in uh, uh, for a while or we were in because of the fry pan bottom breakout. And this using the candlestick signals, it tells us when to get out of positions. Was this exuberance or was this exuberance? So all we have to do is go to our 10 minute chart. Our 10 minute chart here told us that they were staying above the T line. The next day they uh, started pulling back. We took profits, why? Because we were already up in an overbought condition, but we bought right back here because it's telling us they were bringing it back up above the T-line, and we took more profits coming up here. Why were we back in? Because we know the outcome of a fry pan bottom is a very strong price move. That uh, this was going to create, we didn't know where it was going to stop, so we let the 10-minute chart tell us where it was going to stop. Let me see. There's your uh, fry pan bottom J-hook. This is, somebody was asking earlier what my favorite is. The slow curve is kind of a derivative of the fry pan bottom. As long as it doesn't close below the uh, T line, the slow curve usually is a pent up force for big price move pops. I've made a ton of money off the slow curve breakout. Slow curve breakout. As long as it doesn't close below the T line, you're in the right place at the right time. So not only is this good for trading stock, but it's an ultimate uh, entry strategy for trading uh, calls or puts, depending on which way it's going. Bont, we made 100% profit coming out of this uh, fry pan bottom with a little gap up breakout. And as long as it stayed above the T line, we're in the right place. Again, do we always get in big moves like this? Definitely not, but it, at least we're thinking it's going to move like this. And these are just bonuses when you get into a, a breakout days. So whether you call it a rounding bottom or a slow curve, if you can see where they're breaking out, like above the 200-day moving average coming out of a slow curve situation, you're definitely going to be in the right place at the right time. Slow curve. The classic, again, is that fry pan bottom setting up for the J-hook. The dumpling top is the opposite of a fry pan bottom, getting ready for a strong down move. Uh, let's see. How much time do I have left, Jeff? Uh, oh, is it 10 or 1110? or 1210, a uh, cradle pattern is part of that uh, flat uh, doji uh, area. Let me get through these. Just a very flat trading and then bullish confirmation. There's the headboard, there's the uh, bed, there's the footboard between two, uh, two uh, uh, trends, usually gonna create a very strong price move. The J-hook pattern, how do we differentiate between a, uh, 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 a pullback and a, or a reversal because we can see how the indecisive trading is occurring uh, 
getting ready to buy it back. We're taking profits here, we're getting ready to buy back. That gets rid of the fear of, boy, if this is my big, big profit one, boy, would I look stupid if I, and this used to be me, I'd hate to take profits because what if this was the big one and I sold here and it took off without me? Well, now I can see when it's time to take profits and when it's time to get right back into the trade. Because I know that on wave one, out of a J-hook, wave three is going to be equivalent to wave one. So this makes very simple buy points of a J in the J-hook. We could be buying right here with the anticipation that this is our first target. If it fails up here, all right, we made a little bit of a profit. If it goes through, we know we're in a very strong move, the same magnitude move as this one. So if I can see a J-hook pattern and start setting up. Where's my next logical target? Probably up here, the same distance, right up here at the 200-day uh, moving average. These are the type of setups we're looking for. Do we always get into positions where we're in at 15 one day and out two days later at 45? Definitely not. But with candlesticks, we can see what's going on in investor sentiment and getting in situations where the probabilities are pretty good that not only are we going to be an uptrend, but we might be in a huge uptrend. The scoop pattern is very simple. It has a very flat handle, and then that little scoop, which creates a slingshot effect uh, coming out the other side. If I can see buy signals occurring here, where's my first resistance level? Right here. But if I can recognize this is a flat handle, I'm buying because one of two things are going to happen. If it fails right here, I know it failed at the resistance level in the 50. If it goes through, I know I have a strong, strong slingshot effect coming out the other side. If I see a setup like this where there's a buy down here, and then notice what happened right here. I've got a doji occurring, coming out of a fry pan bottom right on the 200-day moving average. This makes for a perfect uh, setup for being bu or buying on a positive open the next day. That tells me they're breaking out. But this one was bought because there's that little scoop pattern. We notice back here how flat this handle is. You can see a slingshot effect coming out the other side. The belt hold pattern is one that we uh, have on as an add-on with the uh, metal stock. This is one of the signals that you should take take uh, heed to because it's very common sense. They gapped it down, and then the bull starts stepping in and bringing it right back up in toward the trading range. What does that tell you? Pretty much tells you they've wiped out all the sellers or the the bulls between the, the fight between the bulls and the bears, they've just wiped out all the bears. So now there's no bears in front and it creates a very strong uptrend. Yep, there's that J hook pattern. Candlestick analysis also makes for very easy trend analysis. The Dow, there's our morning star signal off the 200. It was time to be buying. There was our left right combo. And this is what we've seen over the last few days. We're in a downtrend. Notice what happened here, is we had a potential morning star signal that did not confirm, and why didn't we kind of question whether it was going to confirm or not? Because our stochastics were still heading in a downward direction. So we had two or three of the major elements. We had a buy signal, which is your first element, at close above the T-line, which is a second, but the third element wasn't there where we were in an overbought or an oversold condition. So we needed to see this open positive two days ago on the Dow and trade positive to tell us that we were still in this uptrending channel. The suspicion was not to be jumping in bullish just yet until we saw that confirmation. So with that, if we can analyze what the trend is doing, we can pretty much analyze which positions we want to be in. We shorted away a while back because look at the wedge formation then a kind of spinning top gap down through the T-line. The How long do we stay short? As long as they don't close it above the T-line, we continue to stay short. What did it do Friday? Did a doji. If it opens lower, what type of pattern can it do? A doji sandwich, which means there's still a lot more downside. Patterns have built-in probabilities. We uh, were looking at... Uh, Oh, J-A-K-K -K on Friday. Why? Because there was a fry pan bottom. Remember, what happened in the market the last couple of days? It was down big, but a, a pattern has built-in investor sentiment 
and it's already the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling, which means if they know that the market is trading off hard and they're still buying this based upon the pattern, something's going on here that has nothing to do with the direction of the market. Uh, Monday, I suspect we're going to go down and uh, test the next uh, lower, I think down to the uh, either the 50s or the, uh, I think it's the 200 day moving averages. So anyways, candlestick analysis is just nothing more than graphically analyzing what investor sentiment is doing. This is not a new found uh, secret that's going to make you money. This stuff has been around for hundreds of years. And the first, first uh, thing that the uh, rule of Wall Street is, if something doesn't around, the reason candlesticks are around is because it has one pure common sense element to it. That is that human nature works the same way year after year, decade after decade, century after century. These signals are gonna be just as effective 400 years from now as they were 400 years ago. So uh, with that, I tell people, you don't have to overanalyze candlestick analysis. It's like the uh, lady that brings her parakeet into the uh, vet, lays it down on the table and says, can you help my parakeet? Uh, he's been my best friend for years. And the vet says, well, ma'am, I think your parakeet's dead. And she goes, oh, no, isn't there something you can do? He's been my best friend. Isn't there something? He goes, all right. So he goes to the back of his clinic, comes back in with a cat, lays the cat next to the parakeet on the table. The cat sniffs it, kind of looks up at the uh, vet, shakes his head, said, ma'am, I'm sorry, but your parakeet's dead. She goes, oh, no, is it, are you sure? He's been my best friend. Isn't there something? He goes, all right, goes out to the back of his clinic, brings in a great big Labrador retriever, comes bounding in, puts his paws up on the table, sniffs the bird, kind of shakes his head, looking up at the vet. He goes, ma'am, I'm sorry, but your parakeet's dead. She goes, oh, no. So they go out to the front desk. He goes, all right, that'll be $250. She goes, you're charging me $250 to tell me my parakeet was dead? And he goes, no, ma'am, I would have done that for 18 bucks. Then he wanted a CAT scan and a lab report after that. So I tell people, you do not have to overanalyze candlestick signals. It basically tells you what's going on. Now, we've had, we've, I've done add-ons for Metastock. They identify these patterns. Um, I guess the whole profit system is the exploration for uh, these type of signals and patterns. And this is what you're going to kind of get. Is it going to, it's going to identify where these signals are occurring. So it just allows you to get into positions uh, and identifies them immediately. So uh, again, I guess you get explorations, expert advisor, you get the layout, and there's 20 different patterns that I've kind of quantified as being the best ones. So uh, again, with that, uh, I think, Jeff, are we doing a uh, one-time uh, special of a, uh, instead of 399, it's 299, and also, uh, yeah. includes uh, free access to uh, Metastock Pro. I'll, I'll let you handle it from there. And I guess this is the... Uh, 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 the, uh, the link. Uh, are we supposed to throw the link in? Yeah, that is that is correct. This is Dave. Thanks, Steve. Oh, Dave. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll give we'll him $100 off. On the uh, candle profit system, we will give you a free uh, access to Metastock and Metastock uh, or Metastock Pro, and uh, there is a 30-day full money-back guarantee on that. And it, and I'll tell you, it's one of our very most popular uh, add-in systems right now in Metastock. Uh, it's been very successful for a lot of traders, so people really like this thing. Okay, uh, with that, so uh, if they've got the link. Uh, um, I'll try to answer as many questions uh, as I can. Uh, does the curve work in Forex? Yes. Remember, all these patterns are, have nothing to do with the market that you're trading. The patterns have, have to do strictly with the investor sentiment, and they work in all markets. How do you put on the T-line? Just put on the eight exponential moving average. It works for Forex just as well as it works for gold, uh, cattle, or IBM. Um, let's see. I get the impression you really don't care about the 
HFC traders. They're just part of the psychology of the market. HFC, I don't know. Oh, high frequency traders? No, that's all part of the market. Um, uh, how do you quickly scan for setups? Uh, with scans, once you put your scans in, I tell people if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to find the best possible trades in probably less than 20 minutes each afternoon. The reason I set up these scans and they're so simple is that my uh, modus operandi was that I'd come in in the morning, I'd set up my uh, trades in the first 45 minutes of trading, go play a round of golf, come back in the afternoon and last. 30 minutes of trading, close out what I needed to close out and do uh, my scanning in less than 20 minutes for the next day, which was a perfect uh, trading program, except I haven't been on the golf course for five or six years now. Uh, how do you decide end of day in Forex? Uh, you don't. Obviously, with Forex being a continuous trader, you figure out some sort of time frame, whether it's the hourly chart, depending on how fast you're trading. Uh, you might use a, uh, a one minute, five minute, 30 minute combination, or you might use a five minute, uh, 15 minute hourly combination, depends on how fast you want to trade each market. Um, how much is the real time data feed? Uh, that's for David, okay. How long is the Metastock access good for? That you have to ask David. Um, does the add-on scan for anything except candlesticks in terms of technical indicators? Uh, not, I doubt it, because this is more for candlestick signals uh, scans. I think there's other, other things out there that uh, you can use for other technical uh, signals. Um, does it work only with Infinity futures, uh, that I don't know. I, it works for all all markets. I can trade anything I want to just by looking at the, the chart. Uh, any new baby wild turkeys? No, there's about 40 of them that show up each day. Um, what is time lapse? What is time lapse of candlesticks? I don't understand that question. Candlesticks is the exact, uh, is what's going on exactly right now. How long is the free access? All right. Uh, uh, what if the 15 minute chart tells if a buy and then you look at the daily chart and the candle told me it's a sell. If you're looking at the daily chart and it's telling you it's in a sell mode and your 15 minute chart is telling you it's a buy, that probably tells you that there might be a bounce in this downtrend. Um, you also have this candle profit system for Metastock for that's uh, ask David that. Um, kicker signal only knows after the kicker day in Metastock. You always enter on the open of the kicker what to do. No, very rarely do I enter on an open of a positive uh, kicker. Usually I'm seeing it occur. And that's usually created by somebody in the chat rooms somewhere saying, oh, look at XYZ. It's gapped up today. And if I look at it and see it's doing a kicker signal, I'll get in. On the other hand, at the end of the day, if I do my scans and I see the XYZ did a kicker signal, then I'm going to be ready to buy it on a positive open the next day. What is the most important confirmation signal? Oh, just positive trading or bearish trading, depending on which way. Um, okay, good. Thank you, Scott. Uh, I looked at a 30 minute candlestick pattern as a buy, but I look at the daily candlestick, it says sell. What do I do? Just if you're buying, you better be prepared to uh, get ready to sell it quick as soon as that uh, the trend starts. Uh, indicating it's heading back down again. Have you ever used TC2000 yet? It's a good one. But Metastock, I think, has a lot more advantages over some of these other scanning uh, software. They just have an immense amount of information on there. Um, does scan a Metastock scan for the candlestick 
patterns. I think some of them, the high profit, uh, the ones that I've kind of quantified are in there. Um, uh, Martha promotes volume. All I'm doing is promoting price. And I work it on this basis. I think candlestick signals are the most effective of all technical indicators. Then you just take other people's information and add it to your charts just to kind of enhance what the, the candlestick uh, charts are telling you. Do you have a written report on candlesticks to read? No, we've got a website with 1,300 pages of information uh, showing how to use candlesticks effectively. Plus, I've got three books uh, on how to use candlesticks and how to control your emotions with candlesticks. Uh, let's see. My stochastic settings were 12.33 because I found they were a little bit, I'm a swing trader. My average trade at lasts anywhere from two to 10 trading days, 12.33. And this is not a hard technique. All I did was set up my, uh, scan or my stochastics to correlate with the absolute bottom and the absolute tops of a trend and 12.33 worked a little bit better than 14.55. Uh, my website is candlestickforum.com. Why is candlesticks more effective in forecasting than regular technical analysis? Because it shows you exactly what's going on in investor sentiment. The signals are not signals that uh, are just kind of, uh, the signals have been analyzed and you not only utilized by the Japanese rice traders over the last 400 years, the family that developed candlestick signals in Japan did not become wealthy. They became legendarily wealthy. They were the financial powerhouse of Japan for centuries because they were just trading off one simple element, and that was human emotions. Most accurate time frame, it all depends on what time frame you're, you're trading. Um, I used to trade the E-minis off the one minute, three minute, 10 minute combination. Right now I trade soybeans and cattle and hogs off a, a, a 10 minute, uh, I use the 10 minute as my bellwether. When I'm ready to buy, I flip down to the five minute and the one minute chart. How is your opinion about Heiken Ashi? It's more of a vanilla uh, aspect. I helped uh, uh, write some of the formulas for Heiken Ashi for some of the uh, traders around the country except it's kind of a vanilla basis. If you use the T-line, the most effective trend analysis tool, um, we've had John Bollinger on, he, he'll tell you that all it does is tell you whether you're too far out of the trend or not. Uh, we use Dave Elliott's MOBO bands. Uh, my, uh, Dave Elliott was a, a friend of mine, and um, but I found that the T-line is probably the most effective uh, for, uh, uh, analyzing the trend. Um, we have a live trading room. We have two trading rooms. One's an option trading room, and then we have uh, somewhere around 320, 350 people in our uh, 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 chat room every day. Uh, yeah, I think they'll be sending out a copy of this presentation. Let's see, what time is that? Oh, I got one more minute. Can you explore positive open? Any a positive open is that when we wake up in the morning, if we think the market's in an uptrend, we don't want to see that the uh, pre-market futures are down 140 points. We want to see that the stock's open right around this range of where it closed or positive. We don't want to see it closing like halfway down the previous day's candle. Is your book you stated are in process of quantifying probabilities of the patterns that have been done yet? Uh, no, all I can tell you is that the reason these signals work is because the probabilities are so strong that, uh, again, the reason we are looking at them today is because they work. If they didn't work, we wouldn't be looking at them or they wouldn't be, wouldn't have been identified. What is your average profit percentage swing trade? That I can't answer you because of all the uh, different, uh, I mean, all the market conditions, but I can put it this way. When I was a stockbroker for eight years, I was the worst investor in the world. So there's a whole clientele of people that you have to feel sorry for out there. Right now, I consistently pull money out of the uh, markets because of one very simple 
basic concept because every time I put on a trade, I know the probabilities are in my favor that I'm going to make money. Does that mean I'm going to make money with that trade? Right now, I know that probably about 30% of my trades, I'm going to lose money. And because I know that, as soon as I see that that trade's not working, I close out the position and move on to another trade where the probabilities are in my favor. Uh, www.candlestickforum.com. Could you recommend staying with known stocks or jump into others based upon profit scan opportunities? You can do. You can set up your universe of what you're looking for uh, any way you want to. Whether you want to trade just the Dow stocks or the big money stocks, Google, Netflix, or in my case, I look for all stocks that are trading greater than five dollars because. Uh, I want to find the best possible trades, and the reason I want it five dollars is because most brokerage firms won't uh, 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 won't margin stocks less than five dollars, and I want to get as much leverage as possible when I put a trade on. Okay, does volume influence your trade? No. The only time volume adds a fluffy to my trade is if I see a big reversal signal and there's huge volume. That tells you that a lot of uh, money have uh, uh, exchanged hands and it's usually moving to the smart money. How come I can see the questions being asked? They don't know. Do ETFs are the same as stocks? Yes. Same, same. The indexes are the same. Uh, it's all, again, the cumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling those entities. Okay, I guess I've gone over time, Dave. Uh, um. All right, it's going to be Jeff this time. Hi, we Jeff. Got, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> how are you doing, Steve? Good. Great job. I love listening to you speak. Thanks for coming today. We All really right. appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to take control back from you. I do want okay. to kind of just go over. We had a lot of questions that um, that I want to kind of just kind of go through the offer real quick, and then we'll move on to the next presenter. So let's go ahead and uh, turn it back over to me real quick. I'm going to mute you, Steve, if you don't mind, and um, get me back on my PowerPoint and show my screen. Okay. I just want to talk a little bit about the candle profit system, answer some of the questions that you had, talk to you a little bit about what the pricing is um, very, very quickly. So a lot of you had some questions about what we actually scan for and what it's capable of doing. I think uh, a lot of the big, huge, one of the huge powerful things about Metastock is the fact that you can do scanning for different patterns. And since Steve's patterns are a very visual nature patterns, it's actually pretty hard to design. I think Steve uh, was very, very patient with us in like the 18 months or so that it took us to develop these patterns into scans. But I'm very, very happy with the product that was re re uh, was done when we got everything all said and done. Anyway, here's a listing of all the scans that it will scan for. And uh, I'm just going to leave that on the screen for a minute while I talk a little bit about kind of uh, people have loved this. It's been very, very popular. We've released it back in October. Um, the only negative complaint I've even heard on it is that it's too easy to use and I don't necessarily think that that's a bad thing it is a very very easy to go in and say show me the J hooks in the market and I'll just give you a list of all the J hooks that are available and I, I don't think that's a bad thing but we did have somebody complain that it was too easy it also does have completely built-in commentaries with Metastock and what that means is that for all of those patterns that were on that screen before it's going to show you exactly what happens with us what what that scan is looking for and what we call enhancements to the pattern. So these are things that would make the pattern better because inevitably what will happen is you'll have ten, you'll scan 3,000 stocks. You can get a list of maybe 10 or 20 back. You want to be able to wait to kind of figure out which ones you want to trade. And so we put in different things to look for to make them special. Our cost on this is normally $399, and um, here at the summit, we're going to offer it to you for $299. So I'd 
we do offer that on a 30-day money-back guarantee, but you're not going to return it. It also comes with some very, very cool bonuses. If you if you purchase that, you're going to get a free month of Metastock or a free month of Metastock Pro. Uh, again, I'm going to talk about this in a second, but we've been rated number one for 24 years in a row. Uh, you also get free access uh, for a month to candlestickforum.com, and you'll be able to listen to Steve and kind of see how his patterns come through every day. And uh, don't forget, our sponsor is offering uh, two years of Stocks and Commodities magazine for any purchase over $300. And don't worry, we'll we'll figure out a way to bill you that extra dollar. <laughs> so anyway, so the uh, great product, 30-day money-back guarantee. Try it.